in the near future, you and I are going to be very good friends. Want to talk about it? Here is my friend, Michael Holmes. Thanks very much, Hubo. Well, have you ever wondered what your life is going to be like in the future? How robots and technology and medical miracles are going to change the way we all live? I'm Michael Holmes, here at the Esplanade in Singapore, the CNN Future Summit of Man and Machine. Let's go meet both. Hello again, and welcome to CNN's Future Summit of Man and Machine. Now, over the course of the next hour or so, we're going to be looking at the amazing ways that science and technology are going to change our lives with our friend here, and we've got some other friends too. We're going to be talking about robots with Jun Ho Oh, the man who created our friend, Hubo. Let's begin now with our look at the future with my friend Hubo here. Robots have a long way to go before they match their image on the movie screen, no offence to Hubo, but Hubo and his cousins are quickly catching up. Right now, robots can do some useful but not particularly complex things like vacuum the floor, work an assembly line and walk and talk a little. But like the infants that they are, they're going to grow, develop new skills and surprise us with their dexterity. I think in the next 30 years, we're going to see a transformation between the industrial sorts of robots to personal robots. What is a personal robot? An assistant, a colleague, companion? In 20 or 30 years' time, I expect we will see robots much more in the presence of human beings than they are currently. Some in the industry feel we'll reach a point when life without robots is unimaginable, the same way we regard computers and cell phones now. I've no doubt that in 20, 25 years from now, we'll have a lot of humanoid robots running around among us. And of course, we can't resist making machines in our own image. Like Repli, short for replicant, modelled after a Japanese news anchor. In an experiment, 70% of people who glimpsed Repli for just two seconds believed she was human. Even our friend Hubo has a twin, Albert. Look familiar? And why shouldn't robots imitate us? After all, we are perfect, aren't we? If we're going to start seeing robots running around with uh, personalities equivalent to human beings in, say, 15, 20 years' time, it's about time we started thinking about that now. Bye-bye. 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 All right, we want to bring now uh, Professor Jun Ho Oh, who really is the man mm -hmm. behind our friend Hubo here, and uh, thanks for bringing him along all the way from right. Korea. First of all, what makes him so special? Uh, give us an idea of what he can do. Okay, the, he is a humanoid robot. Humanoid robot means it looks like a human. He moves like a human. So he looks so simple. It highs about 120 centimeters. It weighs under 60 kilograms. But in it, there are so many sophisticated things included, like has 41 motors to move all the 41 articulate joint, and the uh, reduction gears, computers, batteries, even communications and intelligence. So through that, he can see the world. He can hear and he can speak. Even he can understand some verbal comment. Oh, like what? Like what? <laughs> okay, I'll show you. The, uh, may I ask uh, Hubo to greet the guests? Uh, Hubo. Hi there, who now watching the CNN. My name is Hubo. And he's very polite. <laughs> yeah, very polite. This Korean way to yes. make big bow. So what, what, else, <laughs> what else can he do? The, uh, I'll ask him to the, uh, give, you, give a hand to you to oh, make okay. a handshake. Hubo, would you try to give a handshake? Mm. For the yes. uh, Michael? Ready to give a handshake. Okay, gently move and up and down. Okay, oh, so and it's just follow. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, thank you, Hubo. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. And the, uh, I would like to show you that how can he stabilize himself with single leg. So the uh, Hubo will stand with the single leg. I'll show you. Hubo, would you do that? Okay, see? Now, th that's a difficult thing for me to do. I, I think that I don't believe you can do it. <laughs> Yeah, it looks very simple, but he's very busy inside. He's measuring his orientation and rate, uh, speed of rate and the uh, force against the floor and keep balance all the time by calculation. And also, the, uh, he can stabilize himself by two legs. I'll show you. It's very interesting. Okay. 
And now he's in very comfortable rest position. But if I apply the force like this way, looks no, he could very, fall over. Yeah, fall over. Yeah, right. Looks very fragile yeah. and very weak. The reason is that I turn off the control. If I ask him to turn on the control, then the situation will be changed drastically. I will apply the same force, as you see. Okay, it's very, become very stabilized. And if I move back and forth, he's it's resisting. Very it is. Right. If I push him, and, and then he, he will push me back again to keep his own balance. There's a lot going on yeah, inside right, him. Yeah, right. we, we, we should point out, it's important to point out that he's not doing this on his own. He doesn't yet have a brain. Right. Uh, there, our friends over there, your colleagues, are, are working on computers to, to help with this. Now, uh, we did, however, uh, program him a little earlier and, right. and he will understand yes. what I say to him. I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. Uh, Hubo, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am the humanoid robot <laughs> developed by Keist, Hubo Lab, in Korea. All right, and uh, why are you here in Singapore? I came here to show you how near the future is. When human beings and my friends, the robots, can hang around. Very oh. impressive. <laughs> okay, Hubo, thanks very much for that. Do stick around for the rest of the program. I wonder, do you think that, uh, that if, the, if the robot is going to do the gardening for me, bring me a, my breakfast in bed, uh, that's a good thing. But w w do you think there needs to be limits then set? I think that there is no good robot or bad robot. The, uh, for example, we are involved in car accident the, with the uh, life casualty, then who is responsible for that? People, no, no, no one will say that the automobile itself is responsible for that. The uh, drivers or manufacturers or the um, servicemen may have some responsibility for the accident. So same thing will happen for the robots. Now, we want to take a moment to ask our panelists for their visions mm -hmm. of the future. Let's start with Professor Junho Oh. Uh, tell us how you see the world ahead. Uh, yeah, the, uh, already the age of robot will start it, actually. But the, uh, we don't see any main robots in near, but in 20 years, you will be surrounded by full robots. But the, you cannot see which one is real robot and which one is not, because the, all the gadgets and home appliances will be robotized. They just Robot, won't look like you, but. Uh, yeah, there, there, there must be, yeah, something like this, yeah, one, but not many. All other things, the robotic function, like as the means mobility and intelligence. If two elements are added to the existing gadgets, then it becomes robotized. So the old appliances will be robotized. So the, uh, you may feel that, that there is no robots, but you will be surrounded with robots. All right, OK. It uh, wouldn't be a future summit if we didn't get a thought from Hubo. What have you got? What do you think? Robots can do dangerous and difficult work instead of humans. The lives of humans will be better and happier than now in many ways. Well, that's, that, that's what he says. Do we believe 